What's good everyone? So today I wanted to show you how to recreate this Sam Calder effect where the shot is filmed in slow motion but his computer screen is moving as a time lapse. I'm putting Sam Calder effect in quotes because this is a technique that I actually used in my 2018 video a couple months ago as well as my winter vlog last week. In fact, the main big transition that his videos kind of formed around looks quite a lot like a transition that I did back in 2017. Am I saying that he stole the effects? No, of course not. Obviously I'm joking. That being said, this is one of my favorite videos that he's made and that effect really stood out to me as something that would be great for a tutorial just because it's something that I've used in my own videos and have a bit of experience with creating. And if you look at his shot, you can see that his effect is actually a screen replacement that's done in post. You can tell kind of by the edge of the hair in the shot, looks like it's been keyed out, but I'm gonna show you a technique in today's video where you can do this completely in camera, not have to worry about the keying, screen replacement, whatever. Now, even though this is an in-camera effect, there's a bit of setup that we need to do in editing before we actually film our footage, and that's basically just to make the time lapse that's gonna be playing back on the screen. So obviously, you need to start out by screen recording yourself editing a sequence. I basically just took a bunch of clips, audio files, and video files, and just tossed them together in a quick little edit without really thinking about it. Recorded that for about five minutes and we're good. Now I'm just gonna open up my video editor of choice. I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro, but if you're using Final Cut or HitFilm or most other editing software, the technique is pretty much the same. I'm gonna start out by creating a new sequence at the frame rate that I'm going to be filming my footage at. So my camera shoots 60 frames a second, so I'm going to create a new 60 frames per second timeline. Basically, if I were to create a 24 frames per second timeline, then I would be shooting at 60 frames per second, but the screen would only be showing 24 frames per second. So for each frame that my camera is recording, there's going to be less than one frame on the screen, which is gonna result in it being choppy. Once I've created a new sequence, I'm gonna drag that screen recording onto the timeline and speed it up to be as fast as I want it to be in the final video. Since I'm shooting my footage in slow motion, I'm going to nest the timeline and then speed that nested sequence up to 250%. The reason I'm doing that is that since I'm shooting in 60 frames a second, I'm slowing the final shot down to 40% of its original speed. So speeding it up to 250%, cancels out that 40%. Basically, if you didn't do this, you would have a final shot where what's displayed on the screen would be 40% of the speed that you actually want it to be. The advantage of doing this is that you could have, say, a shot that's in slow motion, but what's on the screen is playing back in real time. It's a really interesting, neat look. Finally, I'm just gonna duplicate that clip a few times on the timeline so that it loops, and then export that footage at the same frame rate that I'm going to film it. In my case, 60 frames per second. The beauty of using this technique instead of using a screen replacement in post is that you don't have to worry about anything when you're filming. You can shoot however you want to without having to worry about something obscuring the screen or anything else that would make it difficult to replace the screen in post. Exposing a shot that contains a phone or computer screen can be a little bit tricky, so basically what I would do is just expose the shot for the scene around the screen and then adjust the brightness so that it looks right. Finally, just be careful of your camera angle and lighting to avoid glare on the screen and you should have a pretty cool final effect. All done with this. Out of here. <laughs> it didn't go very far. All that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video or learned something new from it. And if you did, do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two new filmmaking tutorials every single week. Last week, I actually posted my big cinematic winter vlog. So if you want to check that out, feel free to right up here. But that's all for now. Keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one.